Okay, problem two. Problem two has this uh, mass cart on a spring thing, and you're supposed to use this setup. You have to use this setup, they say, and you want you are supposed to use it to find the acceleration due to gravity or the gravitational field G. Okay, and you have to do it using a plot. Uh, so I've seen now there's there's this problem, and on the E and M sample test, there was also a problem that wanted you to do an experimental design using a plot. So you can bet it's a safe bet you're going to see at least one problem uh, on Monday which asks you to, to design an experiment and use a plot to find something. So anytime you're using a plot in an experiment to find something, you are trying to make the plot uh, linear. And so you should remember the standard equation for a linear plot, y equals sx plus b. Okay, uh, I'm using s here for the slope because mass is going to be part of this problem. Okay, I'm going to use m for mass. Okay. Uh, that's why I'm using S for slope, okay? But you should recognize this as the equation of a line. And usually, um, the, the quantity you want to find will be either, will be the, the slope, or you'll, not the quantity you want to find will be the slope, but you'll use the slope to find it. The slope will be related to the quantity you want to find, okay? So how is that going to work here? Um, you're told in this lab you have access to what? You have access to equipment commonly found in a high school physics laboratory. I wish they would tell you what that is. Um, so this is sort of my best guess what they mean. Uh, the first three lines are all things that measure fundamental quantities, okay? First line is stuff that measures length. Second line is stuff that measures time. Third line is stuff that measures mass, okay? So those are your three fundamental quantities you're dealing with in mechanics. Uh, so definitely measuring tools for all three of those would be commonly found, just remember that. And then a mass set, you know, is, is a common thing. And then down here, this is just sort of random stuff I can think of. Uh, you know, that would be anything that's like on your school supplies list for, for, you know, fourth grade or whatever, you can expect that's there. And strings and stuff, you know, just, just basic, uh, you know, stuff you'd expect to find in almost any classroom, right? Okay, whether it's a physics lab or not. Okay. So anyway, the way we're going to do this is we're going to add um, add masses to the cart. Okay, so we're going to add uh, whoops, add little m masses to the cart, which has a mass of capital M. Okay, the spring remember has a constant k. Okay, and what we're going to do basically is we're going to add masses to the cart and measure the change in the spring deflection due to that. Okay, so uh, a quick and dirty FBD of the cart. Okay, you're going to have uh, you're going to have a normal force from the track, of course. You're going to have a force from the spring, which is going to be uh, F. The spring force is going to be K. Normally, we do the spring force as KX. I'm going to make it KD this time because I used X over here in my equation for a line. Okay, I'm just you know. Uh, changing changing the letter there okay if you can use x here and keep it keep it straight that's fine okay and then we have two components for the weight okay uh, so this is going to be we're going to have the mass of the cart plus the mass of the uh, the added mass whatever mass added mass we put onto the cart times g and then this is going to be uh, something of theta so let me do this m plus little m times g, and some trig function theta, and this one is going to be some trig function theta. So remember, this angle here is theta, okay? I'm, I'm sort of skipping past the raw diagram, but if it's easier for you to just, just sketch out the raw diagram fast, then do it, okay? So uh, the one, the angle that, or sorry, the axis that the angle is measured from gets theta, and that's this axis here. Or sorry, the axis, geez, I can't even talk. The axis the angle is measured from gets cosine, okay? So sorry about that. So there you go. Okay. Um, so at equilibrium, okay, what you're going to do is you're going to basically add masses and then you know let the cart come to rest. Maybe help the cart come to rest by sort of grabbing it, holding it in, spot, in a place, and see if it'll stay. Okay. At equilibrium, you're going to have some of forces along this axis will be zero, and what that means 
uh, is you'll have k times d, okay, in the what we might call the positive uh, along the slope direction, okay, minus big M plus little m times g sine theta equals zero, okay. And so we can make this a little easier by going k d equals, and this is going to be, I'll go ahead and break out the stuff in parentheses. So mg sine theta, okay, plus big M g sine theta. So let me explain again what we're going for. We're going for y equals sx plus b, okay. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add uh, varying amounts of added mass, okay. We're going to have very little m. And that is going to be our x, okay? It's going to be our independent variable. And then we're going to measure measure d. That's going to go into y. So you can see what we have here is we've got d here in the left-hand side. So this feels like this could be our y. Um, m here would be our x. g sine theta could be our slope. And then mg sine theta could be our intercept, okay? That's great. We can do it that way. Um, you can break it down that way. I'm going to go one extra step. This is optional, okay? but it'll save a little writing in the long run. I'm going to go and divide through by sine theta. So we're going to KD over sine theta equals mg, little mg, plus big mg. Okay, so now let's go, and I'm going to write uh, in, uh, I'll do this in yellow, y equals sx plus b. Okay, and now we're going to say this here, is y, okay, kd sine theta is y, okay, mg, big mg is b, that's going to be our intercept on our plot, and then what we're going to plot here is we're going to have, or, well, we'll, we'll get there in a minute, okay, um, x is going to be m, because that's the independent variable, we're varying the amount of added mass, and then our slope will be g, like that, okay, so, uh, that tells us, that basically lets us now answer A, B, C, and D, okay? So this tells us what our design is going to be. We're going to, uh, we're going to vary little m, and we're going to measure D. K is known, theta is known, and then we're going to find little g. Big M is known, okay, but that's not necessary. So briefly identify each quantity to be measured. Um, you know, we have a known constant, a known spring constant K, so I'm not going to include that. Okay, over here, theta, they tell us what theta is, um, but they don't, uh, they don't tell us, uh, you know, that it's known. So I'm just going to say we measure theta, uh, how, okay, and I'm going to say use a ruler and trig, okay. So uh, you might measure like, you know, height and do, 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 width, okay, there and use arctan theta, something like that. Um, that's that's as much explanation as I would give, although if you have time and you want to give more, feel free. Okay, what else do we need to measure? K is known. So now we need to measure the added mass, little m, with a balance. Now, if there's a mass set, uh, they, will, they will have specified masses, so maybe you don't need to measure it with a balance, but they say to, you know, measure these things with a back, to tell how you're going to measure these things. So I'm just going to say, we'll, you know, do the double check and measure a little m with a balance each time. Okay. Uh, and then what else do we need to measure? We need to measure D. Okay. So D and we're going to use a meter stick. Okay. Even though the ramp, I mean, our ramps have scales on them. I think almost any ramp you bought, buy from a supply company will have a have the meter stick written on it, but just to be safe, say you're going to measure D with a meter stick. Okay, so this here is part A, okay, which is our stuff that we're going to measure and how we're going to measure it. The procedure used to determine the acceleration due to gravity basically uh, is going to be very little m, okay, and then, uh, you know, measure D for each each little m, okay, and then, uh, let's see, that's the, uh, so they asked for the, and then I guess you could say calculate uh, kd over sine 
theta for each. Okay, and you could say more, but then they're they're getting into uh, you know what you do with the plot. So I'm going to leave this for part B. Okay, uh, and maybe maybe I should say uh, here M is mass added to the cart. Okay, and uh, D is, yeah, okay, so I didn't say what M and D are. D is uh, uh, displacement of spring, okay? Okay, so I, that to me answers part B pretty well in a somewhat disorganized way, okay? Um, part C, hang on a sec, let me check my time, let's see. And okay, um, I'm gonna really quick then just keep going and give us part C. So part C and D basically we're gonna go like this. And uh, here's our plot. So we're gonna have on this axis, we're gonna have KD over sine theta, and then we're gonna have M, okay? And you're gonna have a line, okay? That will go probably something like this. Okay, or actually, would it? You would have um, probably go. It depends on where you zero it. Okay, and then the slope equals g. Okay, and honestly, if you box this, okay, this is separate from part b. This is good for c and d because it tells you, um, it tells what to plot and then what information for the graph would be used and how it would be. The slope is just directly equal to g. That's what we had up here, okay? I think it's all well justified. I think that's a good, you know, less than 15 minute answer. Um, that's a pretty hefty problem for 15 minutes, but you can do it. Okay, so there you go, that's, part, that's problem two.